this book say about our ancient history? The Colbrin Bible, a fascinating yet controversial collection of ancient manuscripts, claims to be that very text. Thought to have been written by ancient Celtic priests and later preserved by the Glastonbury monks, this enigmatic work weaves together spiritual insights and pre-Judeo-Christian teachings. The Colbrin Bible consists of two intriguing parts, the Bronze Book, which contains Celtic and ancient Egyptian wisdom, and the Coal Book, which delves into the Glastonbury mysteries. The texts delve into a wide array of topics, including cosmology, pole shifts, and even the story of human creation. It also presents an alternative narrative of historical events, such as the Great Flood and the Ten Plagues of Ancient Egypt, offering valuable insights into the ancient world's societal beliefs and practices. One of the most captivating aspects of the Colbrin Bible is its unique interpretation of the spiritual realm. It speaks of cosmic battles, enlightened beings from other dimensions, and the karmic forces that shape humanity's destiny. The Colbrin Bible also echoes the sacred geometry found in other ancient works, such as the Vedas and the Sumerian tablets, adding to the narrative that human civilization has been influenced by knowledge from beyond our planet. We're about to get into a little bit of why they don't get into the Colbrin Bible and why they continue to feed you lies and, and continue to deceive you. Now check this out. Colbrin Bible. Just gonna go through a little, uh, a little ep excerpt, excerpt on chapter three, chapter three, Colburn Bible, the Book of Britain, and we gonna go to chapter three, verse fifty-four through fifty-eight. Now check this out: A Roman soldier held up from Gaul, spoke up, saying, let scribes do what scribes do best, and swordsmen do what they do best. But it is foolishness and futile to set one against the other. Man cannot write with words, I mean with swords, or fight with quills, or writing reeds. Let men become brothers, and as they wait the day of the awakener, let me, let, tell me, good master, when shall the end be? Jesus answered, there will be an end to the beginning, and men will know this by the spirit of the times. Men will no longer be as brothers, nor will they be manly. Women will be as men, and men as women. Adultery will not be condemned nor will fornication. Therefore, these will flourish. Men will not honor their homelands. There will be no discrimination among them, nor will they maintain the purity of their races. Fathers will be honored. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Fathers will not be honored nor mothers respected. And children will be raised wayward. Perversions will be encouraged and criminals will mock the law. There will be incest, rape, and it will be unsafe to walk abroad. Floods, famines, droughts, and earthquakes will cause death and destruction. Strange sicknesses will smite the people, and there will be a denial of God. Babes will be slain in the womb. Men will lust at their wives of other men, and marriage shall lose its meaning. Women will go to the marriage table unchaste. And with deceit in their heart. Their husbands, creatures of pity, will hear the mocking voices of laughing men. 
priests will defile their altars with their impurity. The rulers will be held in little repute. It is not God who marks the end days, but men who lives who lives as though setting a pitfall for himself. Jesus saw a man ill treating a horse. He rebuked him for his cruelty to the dumb animal. The man became angry and said, This is my beast. Jesus said, You are wrong. It is God's creature. And I, as his servant, am here to protect it. For no man can wholly own any living creature except it be in the name of the great God of life. This has been copied and edited as found. It appears to have been preceded by documents entitled The Sayings of Jesus. For some reason, it has been cut up into pieces each containing just a few paragraphs. Included were other scraps from such much later source, which for various reasons are suspect. The latter part of this manuscript is probably a late, if not modern, edition, but it may have been rewritten from some older material. This has not been altered and is concluded under the authorization given to the compilers. I hope this just sunk into you because this gave a clear description of the spirit of the times that we in now. Now you can play coy and, and act like you don't know what's going on and be accepting to the unrighteousness spread abroad. But the truth of the matter is the whole concept behind this literature in regards to the morale that, that us as human beings should have and how far away we have come from being godly and becoming animal and beast like it's time to wake up men forget the days of the destroyer only the wise know where it went and that it will return to his appointed hour it ranged across the heavens in the days of wrath and this was its likeness it was a billowing cloud of smoke enwrapped in a ruddy glow, not distinguishable in joint or limb. Its mouth was an abyss from which came flame, smoke, and hot cinders. When ages pass, certain laws operate upon the stars in the heavens. Their ways change. There is movement and restlessness. They are no longer constant and a great light appears redly in the skies. When blood drops upon the earth, the destroyer will appear, and mountains will open up and belch forth fire and ashes. Trees will be destroyed and all living things engulfed. Waters will be swallowed up by the land and seas will boil. The heavens will burn brightly and redly. There will be a copper hue over the face of the land, followed by a day of darkness. A new moon will appear and break up and fall. The people will scatter in madness. They will hear the trumpet and battle cry of the destroyer, and will seek refuge in the den of the earth. Terror will eat away their hearts, and their courage will flow from them like water from a broken pitcher. They will be eaten up in the flames of wrath and consumed by the breath of the destroyer. Thus in the days of heavenly wrath, which have gone, and thus it will be in the days of doom, when it comes again. The times of its coming and going are known unto the wise. These are the signs and times which shall proceed 
the destroyers return. A hundred and ten generations shall pass into the west, and nations will rise and fall. Men will fly in the air as birds, and swim in the sea as fishes. Men will talk peace with one another. Hypocrisy and deceit shall have their day. Women will be as men, and men as women. Passion will be a plaything of man. The nation of the soothsayers shall rise and fall, and their tongue shall be the speech learned. A nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth and pass away into nothingness. One worship will pass into the four quarters of the earth, talking peace and bringing war. A nation of the seas will be greater than any other, but will be as an apple rotten at the core and will not endure. A nation of traitors will destroy men with wonders, and it shall have its day. Then shall the high strive with the low, the north with the south, the east with the west, and the light with the darkness. Men shall be divided by their races, and the children will be born as strangers among them. Brother shall strive with brother, and husband with wife. Fathers will no longer instruct their sons, and their sons will be wayward. Women will become the common property of men, and will no longer be held in regard and respect. Then men will be ill at ease in their hearts. They will seek, they know not what, and uncertainty and doubt will trouble them. They will possess great riches, but be poor in spirit. Then will the heavens tremble and the earth move. Men will quake in fear, and while terror walks with them, the heralds of doom will appear. They will come softly, as thieves to the tombs. Men will not know them for what they are. Men will be deceived. The hour of the destroyer is at hand. In those days, men will have the great book before them. Wisdom will be revealed. The few will be gathered for the stand. It is the hour of trial. The dauntless ones will survive. The stout-hearted will not go down to destruction. Great God of all ages, alike to all who sets the trials of man, be merciful to our children in the days of doom. Man must suffer to be great, but hasten not his progress unduly. In the great winnowing, be not harsh on the lesser ones among men. Even the son of a thief has become your scribe. O oh, sentinels of the universe who watch for the destroyer, how long will your coming vigil last? O oh, mortal men who wait without understanding, where will you hide yourselves in the dread days of doom? When the heavens shall be torn apart and the skies rent in twain, in the days when children will turn gray-headed. This is the thing which will be seen. This is the terror your eyes will behold. This is the form of destruction that will rush upon you. There will be the great body of fire, the glowing head with many mouths and eyes ever-changing. Terrible teeth will be seen in formless mouths, and a fearful dark belly will glow redly from the fires inside. Even the most stout-hearted man will tremble and his bowels be loosened, for this is not a thing understandable to men. It will be a vast sky spanning form, enwrapping earth, burning with many hues within wide open mouths. These will descend to sweep across the face of the land, engulfing all in the yawning jaws. The greatest warriors will charge against it in vain. The fangs will fall out, and lo, they are terror-inspiring things of cold-hearted water. 
great boulders will be hurled down upon men, crushing them into red powder. As the great salt waters rise up in its train, and roaring torrents pour towards the land, even the heroes among mortal men will be overcome with madness. As moths fly swiftly to their doom in the burning flame, so will these madmen rush to their own destruction. The flames going before will devour all the works of men. The waters flowing will sweep away whatever remains. The dew of death will fall softly as gray carpet over the cleared land. Men will cry out in their madness. Oh, whatever being there is, save us from this tall form of terror. Save us from the gray dew of death. The doom shape, called the Destroyer in Egypt, was seen in all the land's whereabouts. In color, it was bright and fiery, in appearance changing and unstable. It twisted about itself like a coil, like water bubbling into a pool from an underground supply, and all men agree it was a most fearsome sight. It was not a great comet or a loosened star, being more like a fiery body of flame. Its movements on high were slow. Below it swirled in the manner of smoke, and it remained close to the sun whose face it hid. There was a bloody redness about it, which changed as it passed along its course. It caused death and destruction in its rising and setting. It swept the earth with gray cinder rain and caused many plagues, hunger, and other evils. It bit the skin of men and beasts until they became mottled with sores. The earth was troubled and shook. The hills and mountains moved and rocked. The dark smoke filled the heavens bowed over earth, and a great howl came to the ears of men, borne to them upon the wings of the wind. It was the cry of the Dark Lord, the Master of Dread. Thick clouds of fiery smoke passed before him, and there was an awful hail of hot stones and coals of fire. The doom shape thundered sharply in the heavens, and shot out bright lightings 